All right, in this video, we're looking at something called orbital diagrams, which are very similar to Bohr models uh, in that we're trying to figure out where the electrons are. It's just instead of being in rings, they're in what we call orbitals. And so there are different shape orbitals. So you see S, P, D, and F have different shapes. S can only have um, one orbital, and P has three, and D has five, and F has uh, seven. That's something else that comes up. So if we have the orbitals pre-drawn out for us, filling them in is, is pretty straightforward. Like carbon, for example, has six electrons. So what we do is every orbital can hold two, and instead of drawing dots, we draw arrows. So we draw an up arrow for one, and then a down arrow. We pair them up kind of like before uh, when we have to. So an up arrow means it's spinning in one direction, and a down arrow means it's spinning in the other. So every orbital can hold two electrons. So we have six to place, so I've just placed two. So then I have three, four. So we fill from the bottom up. So I have to fill 1s before I go to 2s, and then I go to 2p. So I've already placed four. I have two left. The rules are I have to put one in each before I pair them, uh, and they should have the same direction. That is another rule that turns out that's at lower energy. And this is the orbital diagram of carbon. So it has six electrons, and as a result, it, it fills these orbitals. These orbitals up here are empty. Um, so they exist, they're places the electron can go in an excited state, but what we are drawing are ground states, which is when they're at the lowest possible energy. So that's carbon. So next, I'm going to look at titanium, which has 22 electrons. So again, I'll start from the bottom. I go one, two, three, four, and then I get one in each, five, six, seven, and then I pair them, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And that is the orbital diagram for titanium. Now you might see some connection between this and Bohr models. For example, carbon had six, so there were two in the first string, and then there were four in the second. So there is some connection, and that connection is that this 1s, that one represents the electrons in the first string, and then 2, there was 2s and 2p. Together, they had a total of 4, and that's what these four electrons represent. So it's almost, it's just a little bit more specific info, if you will. Um, so for titanium, if we drew a Bohr model, it would be a little tougher. Um, but the first ring holds 2. The second ring held 8. And then, you know, we keep going. We'd have 8 in the third at first. So if we did this out, this is why we don't do Bohr models beyond calcium, because what happens is after here, this is 20, two more go back into the, the third row. So if you notice, there are two in the first string, there are eight in the second, but then the third includes these eight plus these two. So there's actually 10 in the third. So that's why we stop doing Bohr models after 20, because they start going back into the third, and it's a little confusing. So if you didn't follow that Bohr model connection, don't worry about it. Um, just make sure you understand how to fill the arrows in. So what if you don't have them already written out for you? So if you don't already have them written out for you, one thing it does is help to write the electron configuration. So I have another video to go back and look at this. How do I write the electron configuration for bromine? But basically, I'm just following the table. And again, if this doesn't make sense to you, go back and watch the electron configuration video. But bromine is going to be 1s2. 1s2, 2s2, goes to here, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and then 4p5. So it helps to write the electron configuration first, and then if you have to draw the orbital diagram, you're just putting this to a picture. So I start with 1s2, then I have 2s2, Two, then I have 2p6, and then I have 3s, 3s2, and then after 3s2, I'm running out of room. I'm going to go back down here. 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. I'm really running out of room. Normally, just want to give yourself a lot more room if you're going to do such a big atom. And then 4p5, so 4p5. So 
it helps to draw the electron configuration first, write the electron configuration, and then you can just draw it out. That's if you don't have the order already written out for you, because um, the periodic table kind of tells you the order. So anyway, this should make a lot more sense once you've gone through electron configurations uh, and had some practice with that. But just in case it's been a while since you've drawn an orbital diagram, this is sort of one way to go about it. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.